Good news, everyone. We're back for another week. I'm Jerry. I'm Ryan. And this is Two Brothers Off Script. This week, we're talking about the bandwagon. The bandwagon, uh, just the complete lack of original thinking. It's terrible. Um, how you get 99% of your news on now uh, from Facebook in the uh, form of a meme or something. It's just there's a lack that I see of just solid research anymore it's just these uh did you know that 99 percent of of these things are happening in the world today and that's the reason this is going sideways and you should be doing this thing now and that's the only way you're going to save your children's lives in the future it's just i think it's driving people insane it's, it's well it, it just it it doesn't it doesn't enlighten us the, the person who creates the picture and throws the words on it had the original thought. Right. If you take that picture, repost it for your friend, you're plagiarizing their thought. Well, it's designed for that purpose specifically. I well, mean, to get a so it, it, gives, it is... gives credit to the person who created it, but right. what have you contributed to that conversation? What you don't, the people, I think you said the most I see is somebody might put in a comment when they repost and they'll say uh so true they just there's no depth there right and and you can see this lack of of thinking apply to people jumping all on a, a fashion trend mm -hmm. right or people jumping onto a sports team or people jumping into you know politics when it's popular and not caring at all the, up, up until the you know the point where I was, have not cared for the last thirty years of my life. Okay, so let's say you make a transition. Is the transition is the transition for you meaningful, right? Or are you trying to get the approval of other people? Well, I think I have less approval now. Well, that's Just, probably true. I mean, we've had some approval ratings. We've had a are, couple of people you know, pointedly disagree with us, right? Uh, for our limited creativity, but I'd give. Uh, I mean, I get on Facebook because what I'm looking to see is, you know, a little insight into people's lives who I'm not constantly around. You know, sure. I got a, I got a buddy who who likes to go out mountaineering, and he's he's always climbing new mountains. And at this point, most of his pictures are covered in snow, and they all kind of look the same to me. But I understand that for him, it's just remembering a place he's already been. Sure. But he went to these places, and he took the pictures, and he's. He's sharing his adventures with the with the rest of us who don't don't really want to go, you know, fifteen thousand feet up. And I think that that's great. But I don't necessarily want to uh, hop on there and just be inundated with all this political stuff. At this point, I'm pretty pretty over it. I'm really trying to keep politics out of my out of my day to day life. I mean, I I listen to the news in the morning, and ninety nine percent of it. As I would say, is not something that makes me happy. I'm more concerned with the local issues now than I am with the national issues. Um, but those are those are as bad as it can really get for me at this point. I'll, I'll say that certainly learning is a lifelong thing, right? You you can't know everything, um, and you can't you know you can't be knowledgeable on everything, but if you're trying to go out into the world, there's a lot of value in my mind to trying to do something for yourself that you're passionate about. That's not jumping on someone else's idea. And what I think we like, you're plagiarizing someone else's idea. Yeah, you're not allowed to in school now. Um, they'll they'll catch you. You can't go in and turn in a report that was basically copy pasted off of Wikipedia. I mean, half of that information is made up anyways. So if you... 60% of the time, it works 70% of the time? or Something what? like that. It's 70% <laughs> of the time, it works 100% of the time. There you go. You know, it's, um, so I'm, I'm really into original thought. I think that we have some on this show, and it's that is why we keep doing it, is to, to share this, you know somewhat original thinking um i just don't want you know my kid kids to i don't know get used to the the social norm 
Well, and I think every generation, every generation of parents is going to say, hey, you know, your music is crap, right? Yeah. Your, your fashion sense is crap. Your ideas about the world are crap. We're right? reverting now, though. I mean, we're going back to, you know, free love and we're going back to, you know, bell bottoms and we're going back to wearing Velcro on our shoes. Well, there was a long time in the Middle Ages where uh, people wearing spandex around in public was normal. Yeah. Uh, or very, very, let's so, call it very tight fitting clothes. And that's come back in a hurry. Yeah. I saw uh, men's pants the other day have Velcro at the bottom or, uh, elastic at the bottom of them now to hold them hold them tighter they were already men's tight jeans now they're men's tight skinny jeans skinny jeans with velcro or with See, uh, I elastic remember, at the i remember guys and i'm, know, I'm thinking, used to like wear jam pants you know because their muscles were so big you know they had to like <laughs> keep all that extra space in there or maybe they just like you know can't touch this and uh it was it was a, a trend then, you know, because the muscle heads would just be so big that their legs wouldn't fit in a normal size jean. And now the idea is to become so weak that your your best guess is to run as a gazelle would and, and <laughs> leap through the air and bounce your way well, out, of, I mean, out of danger. What people think is physically correct certainly changes. Yeah. Right. Um you know, well, you go back to Mona Lisa used to be attractive, right? I mean, wasn't sure. that, wasn't that a thing? I I guess I just I it's okay for trends to change. Mm -hmm. It's not wrong to say that things are changing. My children are certainly going to have different ideas than I do. That's not wrong. That's good. The challenge is, I think, though, to our children should not be, look, your your thing that you're doing is stupid. But there should be a question there that says. Is what you're doing something that you believe in, or is what you're doing something you're doing to get approval from others? If they came home and they just wanted, they wanted the newest shoes and the newest clothes, they want an the earring, hairstyle. they want a, their hair dyed, they want a tattoo, they want, you know, the the blue jeans that have sparkly crap all over the butt. Well, I had a conversation. I had right? a conversation with with a, a young woman, and I said, I said, you know, the interesting thing about about um, about what you've chosen to, to wear today is it really makes me think about fishing. And she said, why? And I said, well, if you're trying to catch a fish, you know, you put the, the shiny part right next to the hook. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and she said, that's what? I'm not doing that. I said, look, you're putting the glitter... It's going to attract the eyeballs. I mean, that's just how it works. You right? might be, you got to be real careful. Well, I there was there is no unfortunately there was a huge amount of unasked for advice in there, but I'm saying like there's I was no gonna, way to be tasteful anymore the, in this world. No, but you that's, can't give someone advice that says like, look, you, you should X Y Z check your fly because you you're hanging out or something or whatever. And it's if you get if you tell someone, it's worse for people when you point out the obvious. You know, because they didn't catch it in the first place. If a young woman, if my, if your kids four did it, soon to be sure. five daughters, uh, I look at this young woman like a niece of mine, very close to her, and I said, "Look, you, you're, you're." Oh, I thought this was a workplace. No, this was not a workplace okay, conversation. You'd get in trouble. I would get in trouble at work, but no, this was this is somebody that I I, I feel uh, protective of. I'll say it that way. Okay. And so I was just trying to to counsel her. That people notice, right, right, and it you know when I I don't th I think the most um, I just don't think that if I was fourteen years old in this current environment that my brain could have lasted like I would my head would have exploded if I went to the grocery store and women were walking around the in internet, yoga pants the internet is killing it's ridiculous a lot of people's um, creativity I think. Um, there's also, I've heard it from, from multiple people, but the internet has literally made it harder for, for some people to date because the opposite person is staying home uh, more than they're trying to go out because they have entertainment entertainment the right then and there. And gaming, I know some people say that's an issue. I think it's a, it's a great thing. It teaches hand-eye coordination and no well, it, trouble. I mean, I think that... Money. You know, there's certainly there's a lot less social interaction than there used to be, right? Mm -hmm. So, so if you go back 
you know, a hundred years, there was there was community social events, dances and balls and fairs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You go back fifty to seventy years, right? A lot of those things were still in place. You look now, how many people go to the park? I've never taken my kids to. Well, we've taken our kids to a couple of local parks, but it's like an event. Right. It's certainly not a frequent occurrence. Right. There's no dances at the park. We used to go out. When as you go children. to the when you go to the fair, you don't really talk to the other people at the fair. No. You're there for the it's rides. It's a throng and... of people, right? And it's not building community. No. Uh the mall is darn near dead. Right? Yep. The mall was where we went to hang out when we were teenagers. Um there's very few restaurants that are open. I mean, you've got your Denny's and your Sherry's and stuff like that. But, like, the social interaction is breaking down. This is understood. But how come it just it doesn't seem like we really are ever going to be happy if we're always chasing what we think the cool kids are doing? I guess maybe that's my main thrust in pursuing original thought. Like... You and I, to some extent, are taking a risk in, in creating this show, right? Because we we could be, we have been criticized, right? It takes time. It takes effort. Uh, and we're trying to, to share something that's honest and open. Um, when you take that risk in high school, there's a huge risk that you're going to be made fun of, that you're going to be ostracized, that you're going to be... Um, separated from people that you're trying to get approval. And so you change the way you dress, you change the way you talk, you change the way you walk. Sometimes it affects your grades, yeah. right? It affects it affects who you think your friends are. And then you do all of that in an effort to be accepted and in some ways, in, depending upon your relationship with your parents, in an effort to rebel from your parents and find your own identity. But your identity isn't even your identity at that point. You're just adopting what the cool kids are doing or you're sure. trying to be accepted and it i admit that i played uh i played into that well you, you social let me ask you this you started smoking right right did you think you started smoking because of I, i'm not gonna call it peer pressure no it wasn't it and for me it actually wasn't peer pressure um what do you think puts you in that spot well exploration for one, I mean, me and my best friend at the time, we were just out and about and we we had found some cigarettes mm -hmm. and we decided, you know, to try it because we'd seen people smoke. We didn't know what it was. And when you see adults doing something that you're not allowed to do, you're curious about it as to why. Mm -hmm. You'll never know the long term, uh, even if if it's so apparent when they say, you know, this thing is going to kill you. And you, yeah, maybe a lot of things will kill you. I mean, I could die walking across the street, but... You know, I'll try it because there's so many other people who do it. And once I had started, it was just an experiment. Then later on down the road, someone offered me a cigarette. Some guy who I wasn't really friends with, but he just said, you know, like, hey, you know, you, oh, you want to smoke? And I'm like, sure. I, I've smoked before. Yeah. And I, I took a big old drag and blew it out and thought I was all cool and and I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm cool now. And then it just kind of happened that way. Oh, you smoke? Cool. Like, most kids, I think, honestly start smoking because of that, like, mm -hmm. exploration of, you know, boundaries, but also somebody had provided it for them, so they tried it. And sure. I'm betting that a bunch of times that kid who's giving away the cigarette is just kind of, he's not even sure if he smokes yet. But if other people smoke, then cool, I'll smoke. And, and, and he's got access, right? Yeah. He's probably stealing them from somebody at home. Yeah. Right? And so if he can, if if that's his way to gain approval from a group, mm -hmm. he right? basically He'll provides it. cigarettes. It's, and it's then just he like somebody saying, and well, then... I can, we can have a party at my house. I can buy alcohol at my house. I can, like all of these things are, and I'm critical of them. Certainly, I feel like I didn't. I didn't fit in well with that group. I feel like I was very socially awkward. But I feel, do you think you would have been cooler if you had smoked? Do you think you would have no, been cooler No, absolutely if you drank? not. I think that maybe I would have had... I remember the one time I went to a, a, a college or a high school party. A cater. Yeah. Okay. The I remember one time the story. I, I went there. I Essentially, I was, I was told that no one... That I... That, you know, 
this, there was this big thing going on. There was flyers. And I lied to my folks about where I was going. Mm-hmm. And I snuck out and I drove out into the middle of this wooded area. And I parked the car. I found it eventually. I, I, I parked the car, walked up the hill, and everybody's like, holy smokes. Right? Jerry's here. Oh, wow. This is crazy. There was probably 10 or 15 people that said, oh, wow, you're here. Like, it was a big deal. And I felt all of a sudden like I had approval. Right. Right? Because you'd always been an outcast. I I, I, I had felt totally separated from these people. Mm -hmm. And so to have them notice me, know my name, be, you know, and then one of them says, hey, help me carry this. So we, we carry this keg out. Into the woods, and you were strong you know, at the time. Sure, so you, were, was, you were like, "I'm impressive now." Right, I'm able to lift. Carry this it out there. I had a cup, and I had helped him, so I didn't have to pay any money. So he gave me a stamp, you know, and uh, I was just standing around. I wasn't drinking right. at that time. I I really still genuinely like I was scared about alcohol. Like I didn't want to try it. Yeah. But I wanted to be cool. So I was drink, there. Smoke or chew or hang out with and those then, and do. The, and the guy said while we were carrying the keg, he's like, yeah, we've heard we might get raided by the cops. Right. Okay. So you're stashing a keg. A so we're hiding a out. keg out away from the campfire. Right. Everybody's getting crazy. Really nothing interesting is going on. You have a bunch of college, uh, high school kids standing around. And they just get louder. They're getting loud. They're being silly, right? People, some guy started jumping over the fire pit like a numbskull. Yeah, he's on YouTube now, Fail Army. <laughs> and, you know, the girls are all standing in little groups. Yeah. And all of a sudden, cops pull up flashlights. Did you forget about your cup, though? I had my cup. But your cup was full of? my. I didn't have anything in it. I thought you said it was water. I might have had water in it. Because you didn't. told me later on that they called you out. Yeah, they call, so they called me out. They actually, the cops had two or three undercover guys in there. They had, I remember one of them had this denim jacket on, and he pulled down these little patches. They had undercover at your party? Yeah, because, because the morons had put out flyers. And the flyers had gotten picked up by the parents. They had the address, the location, every the time was on there. And so the cops were like, yeah, we're going to go raid this. They had like 279 kids, minor in possession of alcohol, busted. Okay? So what they did is they start, you know, they start going down the line one by one by one, Right? And they've got a black light, and they look at your hand, and they see that you've got a stamp, and they say, you can blow in the breathalyzer or not, Mm -hmm. right? But if you have alcohol, or if you refuse, you're going to get an MIP, a minor possession. So we're going along the line, and the the guy comes up, and, you know, he was, I think, as police are going to be in that situation, he was authoritarian with a a young kid. Mm -hmm. And he says to me, he says to me, uh... You're uh, you're gonna blow, and I said okay, and I blew a triple zero, right? And he goes, he goes, blow again, right? <laughs> he's all mad, right? So he's like, blow again. And I said okay, so I blow again, triple zero. He's like, I saw you carrying that keg, and I said, I don't know what you're talking about. He goes, I saw you carry a keg. I know you did it. I said, I don't know what you know that I did. I just I. I'm here. He's he's like, well, we're going to get you for trespassing. I said, okay, but there's no tres- no trespassing signs. He's like, well, this is land. And I said, okay, right? Can I go now? And he's like, no, you can't go. And I was like, okay. So I sat there for a while, and he, like, wandered off. I just got up and walked off. <laughs> right? Like, there, I, in my brain, I'm like, there's no way this is going to. So I walk off. I got down kind of by the car. And it was all blocked in and everything. And I think we were there for like two and a half more hours or something. They write all these kids up. They call all their parents. Parents are coming up to pick up kids. You know, if they're too drunk, they can't drive. Mm -hmm. On and on and on and on. Just just giant mess, okay? I jumped onto a bandwagon in this story. And I only (laughs) escaped with my hide because... I was afraid to drink. Yeah. In that situation. And the, the the lesson for me there was like, that wasn't worth it. Right. That was a horrible experience. Doing anything underage is usually just a short 
shortcut into getting in trouble. And we've talked about, you know, learning your lessons. And I have learned a lot of the bad lessons. I've learned them more so than, than I think you or Daniel have because, uh, I mean, I was, I don't know if it was just because I was the youngest or something, there was less, less uh, watching me. But I did get caught many times by the parents, but I also got away with as much stuff as I got caught for. Well, I always felt like, it, and this was just while we were growing up, like I always felt like because I was the oldest, I had a higher expectation of, mm-hmm. of discipline. And I felt like you and and Daniel had a lower expectation of discipline, but I was also a jerk. And so like my reputation, my ability to call them out was damaged because I I didn't have any ethics. You know, I'm in there enforcing dish room cleaning, you know, getting the dishes done and cleaning rooms and stuff. And I've beaten up my brothers, who at the yeah. time was a lot smaller than me. And, you know, I wasn't being... I wasn't being just. And so like that took up all the attention. Right. Right. And if I got, if I got in trouble and Daniel got, you know, like there was only so much patience left. I know this with my own kids, right? Like I get down to the end of the day. Like if I'm having a problem with one of the older ones, the younger ones can get away with some stuff. Well, I'm not looking right. Cause I'm concentrating. I'm trying to take care of the one. So right. I think in your case, like there's just, you know, there's things that happen. Yeah. But what do you think for you? So I told my bandwagon story. Like, what for you? Well, you if I had to say that, you know, starting smoking was getting on the bandwagon or, you know, listening to certain kinds of music or getting into criminal trouble or, I mean, I did a lot of things in groups with people that would definitely not, you know, win me any points now. Um, do you have relationships with any of those people now? No, not really. See, I don't either. I think that's the interesting thing about the bandwagon phenomenon is I, I think that... But that's me too. I mean... It I, is, but it's... I'm not big on friends. Well, I understand that. I think that um, anytime you have a relationship with these people that's built on... Uh, Just that commonality. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you're building a relationship based on like, hey, we have those same clothes or we like the same music or hey, we both went to a, a music, uh, you know... Uh, a, a concert together, but then it's not change. enough. You right? change, you change, they change, and you haven't really understood people's hopes and dreams, right? And so you haven't developed them at that point. You haven't, but, but you're jumping onto a bandwagon because you're trying to gain people's approval. Like mm-hmm. my philosophy of friendship right now, at least, is that you don't really create good friendships. Until you've had an argument and a fight with that person, and you've gotten over it. Right. It's an issue that that basically transcends just, you know, you guys' opinion about specific, whether you're DC or you're Marvel or something like that. Um, and these are, you know, there's, there's minor issues that you're going to encounter with people, and you can get over them. But if you can go into the grocery store, and that person is, like, just irritating you because of the type of fruity pebbles they want to pick out or something you're like i'm cocoa pebbles not fruity pebbles you know get out of fruity mind. pebbles are better you're unfriended this is over you know like right now a lot of people are unfriending each other because of uh, politics which is not the defining characteristic of people it's not it's right. not it's not a personal identity it's I mean, but yeah but whether it's, it's two party or one party how, or how whatever, can someone really say how can someone say like I have people who believe radically different things than me, and I still like them. Mm-hmm. Okay? Because and I know it's not the person. It's not the person. We can disagree on a political issue, right? So as long as that person, and we, we, we've we had the, the conversations about our, our trolls, right? Our trolls could say that they hated us and hated us and hated us and didn't like what we were doing. Right up until the point where they spew hate. Right. Right? There's a boundary there. The same thing is true and should be true with the relationships you build with other people. Like, if you want to have genuine relationships, there needs to be a conversation about who you are as a person and who you hope to be. Mm -hmm. Your hopes and dreams are what define you, especially when you're young. Yeah. Right? When you're a teenager, like, you should be talking about your hopes and dreams. I think right now I don't have the same, like, I don't have a specific direction. I never really picked one up. I wanted to do a lot of things when I was a kid. 
but none of those things were what I ended up being. And at some points I feel like, man, I really should have pursued that as a career because it would have been much more rewarding than my current, um, my current avenue. So if, if I had, you know, done the homework essentially in, in school, I would probably be in a completely different place and it might be better, might be the same. I don't really know. Well, we talked about that last week in the choices video, right? Like we don't know necessarily where but they're letting are. themselves get overtaken. As they do. It's, it's, it's like a little cult. Yeah. Right. The cult of the people with the flashy jeans, right? So I'll just have to reinforce whatever idea my kid has when they come home from school and they've got crazy ideas in their head or ideas that I don't necessarily di disagree with. But, hey, I understand right now your friends mm -hmm. think that it's really popular to be a rock band person or something like that. But why don't we go ahead and keep working on the, the homework and then we'll figure out, you know, a way for you to get down the line there. So it's two quick stories on that. The first one is... I had a niece who said, I want to get a, a, she wanted like a lip stud or a tongue stud. I can't remember what she, but she wanted something. Some she kind of a metal piercing. more on her face. Um, and I was like, oh, that's really interesting. Okay. Now you can respond and you can try to be like, no, you shouldn't do it. Right. Right. But I was like, oh, that's really interesting. Um, and, and let's have a conversation about that. And I was like, cool. And she was like, yeah, I really want to get this done. I was like, oh, cool. We should watch some videos about it. So we watched, I, I clicked on some videos of people getting piercings in their face, right? Yeah. And they're sitting there, like there's very attractive people, and they go and they sit in this chair, and then you watch some dude stab them with a needle in their nose, right? <laughs> and and it looks painful, because it turns out it's flipping painful, Yeah. right? And blood's coming out, and their girls are crying, and they don't look beautiful anymore, Right. And uh, we're having this conversation. I was like, huh, that man, that look, oh, we shouldn't watch this anymore. That really looks like that hurt. Let's see if we can find a better one. We watched like six of these in a row, right? They're all bad. They're all bad. Yeah. Right? And so you get to the end of it. Nobody was happy. Okay? <laughs> At the end of it, nobody was happy. It doesn't and, look pretty anymore. And because I ended the video like early, right? I end the video in the pain. I don't end the video like six months later. In the epilogue, right? right? Where they're all make up to back up and they've recovered. Yeah. I end the video like during the infection phase. <laughs> when it's gross. Yeah. Right? And in that conversation, I was like, this is really interesting. Huh. I wonder if it hurts really, really bad. Right? And I just I was just asking questions like, could this potentially be incredibly painful? I would just offer to do it for at the them, end save of, them some At the money. end of the conversation, she was like, I don't think I want to get that done. And I was like, oh, oh, well, okay. If that's what you wanted, you know, if you don't want to do that anymore. Right? Yeah. But they can go, they can get past that as simply as it's a short-term solution to a long-term problem. It is. The but minute they, they walk billion? out the door and they see somebody that they like who's got it and they're like, yeah, you know, it hurt for a few minutes because the human brain <laughs> cannot remember pain. It's unfortunate because if you could, you know, imagine nails on a chalkboard. Let that sink in. <laughs> nails on a chalkboard. And that is the only thing that it, I could talk about nails on a chalkboard for a hundred people, and it's just like, oh, don't even mention it because it annoys but me. But so you much. can think about you can think about. Um, but they'll still get a stud in their cheek. You know, don't you know? That when you bite your cheek and how bad it hurts, like imagine doing that on. And a it doesn't make somebody like this. Doesn't make somebody well, a bad person. You got a person, dimple right? now, and it's metal. But but the the reason is why are you pursuing these things, right? Why are you chasing the approval of people? Because they were born this way. We're not going to have a good relationship. They were born this way. Well, I don't want to be dismissive of the people involved. I just want to say, like, every, all of us want to be happy. All of us want to be accepted. And I think that, the, the so the second story I was going to tell is like, I'm telling my kids, and I've talked about this, right? Like, I tell my kids, I love you when you make good choices, and I love you when you make bad choices. In the hope that I can at least address the prime mover of some rebellion, which is, if I do this wrong, you know, my parents won't love me anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, I certainly feel like I tested my parents with the way that I was rebelling. I tested the people around me to see if they really cared by rebelling in the right way or rebelling in a way that I thought would make them fail a test, right? If somebody said, hey, how are you doing? 
And I said, I'm okay. And they didn't ask again. Mm -hmm. Then they didn't really care. And I, I don't know now, it seems like when I talk to people and I see, I see, I feel like I see that all the time. I'll talk to somebody. Hey, how are you doing? I'm okay. And if you are most people, you just keep walking. Right. And right. I, I was screwed up enough in the head that I thought I was, you know, testing the world. Now I ask again, are you really okay? Or are you that kind of okay where you're actually crappy? Yeah. And you're just saying you're okay. Yeah. And when I ask that second question, I've had every kind of conversation there is because I think all of us want somebody to genuinely care about how we're doing. Right. So to me, that's the answer to fighting this bandwagon phenomenon is just build genuine relationships and try to make them the best you can. Well, keep your, keep your kids and try and keep them safe. I mean, that's all we can really do, but, uh, I just keep reinforcing it. Hey, you're, you got ideas. What are they? And where do you want to go in this life? I mean, do you want to be just another worker? Because if all you do is stop at high school and you don't ever pursue anything else, then you're, you're pretty much going to be stuck with me, you know, just <laughs> making, making, making something stuff for somebody else. So. That's hard. It's hard. There's not a lot maybe, of value. Maybe someday making YouTube videos will be be worth money uh, i think it can be it can be maybe. well if you want to help us make youtube videos you can click that subscribe button down there in the bottom yeah. right hand corner of the screen like dislike let us know comment section down below and all that fun stuff anyways guys uh guys and gals thanks for watching we'll see you next time